Model Rockets 321 here. Welcome back to the channel for another video. And this is going to be a good one. I've been waiting to do something like this. This is the truth about model rocketry. Don't get me wrong. I love this hobby. So I'm going to cover everything involved with this hobby, whether you're new or whether you're just coming back to the hobby. I'm going to go over everything you need to know. If you want to get started in this hobby of model rocketry, it is hands down the best hobby. I've done some other hobbies, um, plastic model building, it's cool, but they just sit there, they don't really do anything. Whereas your model rockets, they can sit there and you can take them out and you can launch them. As long as you recover it, you can launch it again and then it can sit on the shelf. Uh, I've done some RC cars, loved that, that was cool. But I always was more pulled in by the um, model rocketry. I started when I was nine years old, been doing it for a long time and seen a lot, <laughs> done a lot. So I'm certified at level one through NAR. NAR is one of the organizations. That's another thing. You can join NAR, the National Association of Rocketry. You get a monthly or bi-monthly magazine. You get a lot of tips, tricks. They sponsor events. NAR is great. And you're insured in case you burn it all down. Don't burn it all down. Follow the, we got safety code here. The hobby is great. It has a safety code. It's already laid out. Just follow this stuff. Be safe. Do it right. And don't bring no unnecessary attention to the hobby that it don't need. So we got a safety code here. It tells you everything about, you know, flying model rockets. Some um, just things you shouldn't do, things you should do. Motor designations, um, the scale, competition, rules, regulations, all that stuff. So this is the sporting code. You'll get one of these. Um, you can even look this up online just so you can learn more. But um, yeah, like I was saying, it's the greatest hobby. Started when I was really young. Um, been doing it for a very long time. Um, I have a nice collection of rockets. I really love the vintage ones. I like the new, some of the new stuff too. I get kids still. I'll, FD's been doing a really good job. So I'll grab some stuff that they put out. And um, that's what I do. So we're going to keep moving this right along with um, the truth. The truth, the truth, the truth. If you're just getting started out, um, I recommend starting small. If you are inclined, you're an engineer, you can build, you can design, you can do, you already got, you know, a good head on your shoulders and you can, and you're not a tiny little kid, you know, 18 year old or, you know, an adult for the most part. Um, start with something small still, but Aerotech is also out there. Two companies that I recommend, I start, recommend starting with Estes or any of those other companies, Estes Quest, even North Coast, they're a little more advanced there, but move into it slowly start with something like an alpha the alpha is a good kit to start with but keep an eye on it once you get it built um c engine you can lose it keep an eye on this rocket start with an a engine just to get familiar with the sequence if you can find a starter set you can get those fairly cheap it comes with everything you'll need um except the engines i don't think they're giving engines now you may have to buy a motor separate you'll need batteries you get a launch pad controller and batteries set the rocket up launch it just to get the feel for it. Now, if you're really advanced, and like I said, you're a serious adult, you get good ahead on your shoulders, you can probably get away with starting with Aerotech. Now, Aerotech is moving into mid to high power. They got some serious rockets, bigger motors, and you will need a big recovery area. That's the other thing I gotta tie into this. It all involves with how big your field is. If you have a small flying field, don't fly Aerotech. Here's an Aerotech rocket. It's mid power. That motor is a 29 millimeter motor. It's a bigger motor. Sometimes reloadables. You can see here the reload motor right here. These are motors you build. All this stuff gets burned up and thrown out, but you keep the casings. That's another thing we're going to get into cost too. Here's a casing. This is a 29 millimeter motor casing. You got a forward and an aft closure. These come off, you build the motor on site, you want to build really well because you can mess that up and blow your rocket up. So <laughs> build well, clean, just take it seriously when you're getting into Aerotech. So if you're a new beginner, small stuff just to get a sequence, more inclined, kind of know about rocketry already, you can probably jump back in with Aerotech, have a big field. Their tubes are tough, fins are usually like a hard plastic, they got this nice beefed up launch lug for your launch pad. So and you will spend a little more money when you get into Aerotech. But, and SDs may be the best way to go for anyone, but more inclined, you can go to Aerotech. They have uh, some nice stuff, the initiator, they have some starter sets out there. So that's getting into the kits and everything. Um, next, we're gonna move to the types of rockets. Now, behind me, you see this big rocket right here. This is a scale model. This is considered, these are like 
sport sport models. I have no whole nother video about the different type of sport models just to get you going. Um, then you have your starter sets. This is a space shuttle. This is actually vintage old school signed by Vern Estes and Glada Estes. I got this from a friend. He got it signed at a NARAM. That's another thing. NARAM, they're big events you can go to when you get into this hobby. Um, a lot of cool stuff to do in this hobby. So in the rockets range all types of sizes. You got tiny little rockets that fly on mini motors like that. You got SDs, this is considered low power too. This is a D12, uh, D12-5 engine. They fly in different, different rockets that get a little bit bigger. They can range from very small to 10 feet tall. But then that gets into certifications um, through NAR. You can get certif their certification levels to handle bigger motors. That's another thing. Um, I'm certified at level one. So I can handle from A motors all the way up to H and I motors. Certification level two, I'll be J, K, and I think L motor. It could be just J and K. And you can keep moving up. I'm, I stopped at one because I typically don't fly high power. I got my high power stuff, but it's just more of a hassle for me because the club that I used to fly at, they got they moved the club. We lost our land and it moved further west. So that kind of retired me from flying on anything bigger. So I tend to st stick to some of the stuff you see here. And this is, if you check the channel, you'll see more of my other videos. Um, but overall, great, great hobby. And I'm just here to tell you the truth about it. But real quick, please subscribe to this channel and hit that like button for me. We're moving at a good pace. I appreciate you guys. Also drop a comment, any questions on anything that I'm discussing, drop a question. So I have to keep moving on. Um, I mentioned location. That's super important because if you live in a city Flying, if you may be able to fly at a sports uh, school field or something like that, but that's going to be small, low power rockets. Don't fly anything big in there because you will lose the rocket. Fly small in a small field. The bigger the motor go, you need more space to recover, depending on the wind and everything. But the bigger the motor, you I like the biggest space possible for any rocket. Because I, so that's just my thing. I'm in Arizona, and I have a nice field to fly in right now, but that may go away. They have been moving some dirt around out there so that may go away but I have some connections I know some friends we that I may be able to find another place to fly you know on the weekend it's a lot of spots but it's just it's really that's that's the one of the main difficult things in this hobby um land like if you have a place to fly and developers move in and then you're done that happened to our the field and I've seen it happen a couple other times even on the east coast so and clubs I'm talking about joining a club oh back to back to the space yeah if you the bigger your space you can move into the bigger rockets like the aerotech stuff like i said these are some serious rockets they will get up there pretty good um built a little more beefier big motor mounts everything is just bulletproof tough um and you want big you want a big recovery area you want to get the rocket back you don't want to lose it you don't want to go out there it's something you know worked hard on and now it's gone so i definitely recommend having the big space and joining a club a lot of clubs have spaces where you can go and fly they took care of the waiver there's FAA waiver you know it's a ceiling that um saying you won't be flying past they notify you know the uh, pilots they all know and air, the airports all know um, so that's another thing to consider and um, to take a quick little segue the hobby's been thriving um, for years it's been doing well I've never really heard of any really serious incidents and we want to keep it that way you know, follow the safety code. Don't do nothing dumb. Don't launch. If you find a little field you can fly in, just make check the sky before you launch. Make sure it's not in a flight path of planes taking off and planes landing. Be far away from all that is possible. Make sure your range is clear, sky is clear. Always check. Don't launch in their path. Even if they're just passing you, let them get far away. This is my. This is what I do. I let them get far away, then I launch. Because I don't. I never want to launch in them to see it that's my thing i mean even though those guys probably know all about model rockets just don't do it just avoid that altogether. let them have the sky then you do your thing that's um just my rule even with the low power stuff let, let them fly and then you do your thing so this is the truth about model rocketry location staying safe um and it's just a fun it's a fun hobby though i'm gonna say that um i had a lot of enjoyment met a lot of great people doing this um it's been just been great. Like I said, I started when I was nine. I was in clubs in Jersey and uh, MDRA, Maryland Rocketry. I forget what they're called. They, they're still doing their thing in Maryland. Nice field to fly in. But that line of trees out there, I've never lost one in there. But those trees always scare me. But for the most part, um, it's a great, great hobby to get involved with. Um, especially if you're if you, you're coming back to it. 
there's a lot of new stuff. You've been away for years. It's it's a lot of new stuff to do. Um, and let's talk about motors again. Um, these are I showed you. This. I already showed you. This. There's new year casings, reloadable motors. All your stuff's in there. You build. You got your O-rings and everything you need. We'll go in this. You throw this stuff away once it's burned out and use this again. But you have to be really clean when building a reload motor. Um, and a lot of these areas that you fly in are dusty and dirty. And I have a little tray that I would build on um, whenever I was doing reloads. Um, but you can fly those or you can fly single use. Aerotech actually makes single use motors or you can do the black powder Estes ones. Single use, throw this away. It's done after you, after flight. Um, that's another thing to cover. So yeah, just sit in building, take your time building, build it nice, get it all together. I have a video about building, um, different ways to make them look really nice, or if you just want a flyer, put something together, go out on the weekend. And it's a hobby for everybody, um, all ages. Like from, like I said, I started when I was nine, I'm an adult now, and adults do it, kids do it, do it with your family, friends, you can get them involved. You know, joining a club is pretty cool. You can, you'll see a lot of cool stuff. I've seen some of the best stuff in clubs. Um, I learned a lot from them guys. Um, I enjoy scale, scale models my thing. I have scale models um, around here, uh, different ones up on the shelf. Um, sale, Scott, uh, scale, sci-fi, um, you know, X-Wing fighters. You can build all that stuff. All that stuff can be done in this hobby. It's just a great, great hobby that we want to keep going. Like I said, it's been good over the years. Follow the book. Follow, you know, follow the code. Um, I ain't saying you gotta go read through it, but be familiar with it, what you can and can't do. Just be smart. Like I said, just open area away from everybody, away from everything. Bring who you need. I bring a fire extinguisher. I know it's dry here in the desert. Um, I just have it just the safety safety precaution. Um, you never know you get a fire to pad. You want to be able to put that out real quick or whatever. But just have it just to, just to be just to be on the safe side. And you don't want any incidents. You want you don't want unnecessary attention coming to yourself um, when you're doing this hobby. And it's like super safe too. It's a safe hobby. Um, and the drones. I have a drone. The drones are more regulated than um, rocketry, from what I see. They are super regulated. Um, I have one, and it's you know it's just a. I could, you could fly it. There's a lot, a lot of rules to it where I don't see them really messing with rocketry like that, which I appreciate. I'm glad because uh, you know we want to keep being able to fly. And uh, let's talk about the cost of this hobby. This hobby, I always tell people from $5 to $500. You can get a starter kit. I mean, probably at Hobby Lobby or somewhere online, probably for 25 bucks. And then you're probably a couple engines, some batteries. So you probably spend maybe 40 to 50 these days and you're already flying. You got something to fly. And then you can move up. Like I said, you can move into bigger SD stuff. You got other companies out there to make rocketry. If you do search on model rocketry companies, you'll come across all kinds of stuff to get. They have boost gliders. I didn't even touch any of that yet, but there's all kinds of stuff. These are boost gliders, I'll be afraid you may not know. These are rockets that take, they take off like a rocket, a pod falls back, and then they glide and they land. Behind me, right about there, that's that's a boost glider right there in the background. That's um, the, that's the trans wing swing glider. It, the wings fold, pod kicks off, the wings kick out, and then it glides. Has some great flights out of that one. So, and here's an example of some, this is an entry level, it's the Estes kit. They all look like this, similar to this. They all look like this these days. Um, this is the Estes Jetliner, this is in the pack. I only think they, I think this is out of production now actually, but this is a skill level one kit. Um, you get a tube, you get some parts in there, a little nose weight, launch lug. Um, just simple, basic kit to build. You will have to do some painting, but don't let that scare you. Some people, it's called flying naked. Some of people build it and just fly it the way it is. But, you know, take your time, build build your rocket, and um, get everything you need. Go out there and launch it. But I do recommend a starter set. That way you'll get your launch pad and controller. You get a kit like this, you'll have to buy everything. So, there's an example of one. Here's a Zarconian Cruiser. This is just a um, like sci-fi type design. Kind of a big model, big rocket. How tall is this one? This one's 22 inches. Skill level five. See, this is a little more advanced build. Skill level is something to consider. If you've never built one, go ahead and do still skill level one, skill level two, and keep moving up as you build your skills because it will take some skills to build. This is a skill level five kit. And here's another example of um, something. So we have the Mercury Redstone. Classic, classic SD's rocket. Skill level three build. Um, you got the capsule in there you'll have to build. That, that frustrates a lot of people building that, that tower. Just a, just a warning. <laughs> just a warning. But yes, yeah, Mercury Redstone. So here's a couple. Those are a couple of kits. 
a couple kits by Estes. Like I said, there are other country, company countries. There are other companies out there that make rockets for you to get um, small companies, large companies, mid-power rockets, like something just a little more bigger than those. Aerotech, as I mentioned before. If you want, if you're coming back and you've done this before, and you want to start with something that's a little more beefy, a little more louder roar, but you have the space. You gotta have the space to do it. Um, you start with the Aerotech stuff. This rocket right here, I've been talking about this little Joe. I think I have it on this channel. This is a big, this is, uh oh, everything's falling. This is a big, big rocket right here. This is a company that came into play probably 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. Maybe a little after, 2005, six, seven, or eight, somewhere. Anyway, this company, Sherry's Hot Rockets, came out, was putting out all these scale rockets. And I love the little Joe too, and always wanted a big, big one. And I got it. Um, so I launched this several times. I had, had some flights out of this one. I crashed this rocket. I had trouble getting parachute to eject out. Man, this is a rebuild several times. Um, so this rocket right here uh, gave me a lot of joy. It's, it's retired now. Um, it's seen its day. It's got some cracks, a little dirty, but you can see all that epoxy on there. Just rebuild until I finally got it to work. Then once I got it, I retired this bad boy. I retired this little joke too. But yeah, it's just one of my one of my prizes. I like it. Um, just for display now and storytelling. But um, yeah, that being said, there's you know the hobby is is vast. It goes goes many 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 ways. Many things to do. There's a Nard Trek program. It's a um, self paced program it's cool i'm gonna do it again i didn't i started it then i moved some years ago i want to finish nar trek program it's just you go through these phases of doing different things at your own pace and you submit it and you'll get a a patch i think you get a patch for that if you complete nar trek so that's they got that team america rocketry channel all kinds of there's many things to do in this hobby rc you can combine rc gliders many things many things the hobby is huge so and we're still thriving, but it surprises me that I still find people that have never heard of it once in a while. Some people still out there never heard of the hobby. And I'm always, you know, ready to tell them about it. So that's just the way it goes. Um, this is Model Rocks 321. Please hit that subscribe button and check back for more videos. Um, check the video I put on the end of this video and drop your comments. All right, guys, signing off. It's Model Rocks 321. And this is the truth about model rocketry. Get involved.